If you happen to be one of the folks out there who are prone to motion sickness, you better avoid this or at least have an emergency bag at the ready while playing. Regardless of the plot, art style, or anything else in here, the game first and foremost is an arcadey free run simulator meant to give you the thrill and high mobility of free running. Uh, free running, if you haven't heard of it, is sometimes referred to as parkour, which originated as a training discipline using movement that developed out of military obstacle course training. And what it amounts to in layman's terms is doing a lot of flips, sides, jumps, and otherwise acrobatic and seemingly dangerous tasks off of everyday things. Although parkour is a blast to watch, the real question in this case is, is it a blast to play? Thankfully, the biggest strength in Mirror's Edge is the fact that it is indeed a very good free-running race-esque element. The single portion will override all other things, including the plot, the combat, the aesthetics, and sometimes actually the mechanics itself. The added benefit of the bob and weave of the camera, down to the almost dizzying camera maneuvers upon a roll landing, help add a sense of truly being in the first person, as opposed to the rather static rail ride smoothness of most of the first person genre. It really adds the immersion factor, especially when you notice that your character's breath is getting ragged as you run or are hurt, and it just really helps to make you feel as though this is in fact you. The plot picks up after a lot of backstory has taken place, and the game doesn't really bother talking too much about it, taking too much time to really fill you in. The city is currently run by a totalitarian government that highly monitors absolutely everything, so folks that wish to talk a bit more secretly employ the services of folks known as runners, a courageous batch of parkour experts who zip across the rooftops to deliver your messages. Uh, the players particularly play as one named Faith, who after delivering a message to another such courier finds out that her sister has been framed for the death of a politician, prompting her to investigate the matter and attempt to save her sister because cops are not treated well in prison, and Faith's sister just so happens to be a cop. There's a whole mess of twists and turns amongst the plot, but at the same time, a lot of it doesn't give one the sense of, oh man, I never saw that coming. It's a basic plot, really just serving to get from point A to B and stage to stage, and the parts that aren't gameplay-oriented are usually unfolded in a rather well-animated, in a drawn sense, cutscene. The cutscenes in the game itself all share the same aesthetic, which really makes for a very tranquil feel most of the time, but also a rather bland landscape, because you're going to end up seeing a lot of background space that is either white on everything and everywhere, or some shade of blue or red. The blandness does help to refine one of the gameplay mechanics called runner vision, in which case some objects are colored red to signal that you should or can interact with it in some way and also helping point you in the right direction. Each stage ends up flowing much the same as the last one though, which normally boils down to a running segment, a combat segment, and then some more running segments. It's the combat segments that actually feel the worst in this game. Although during 90% of the running segments you feel as though you are one with the game, with that other 10% usually being you missing by a hair and falling to your doom and restarting, the combat always ends up feeling like more of a chore than you wish you could just skip it outside of the first stage when it's introduced. Use of guns when you steal one feels generally lackluster, both in impact and on-screen presence, and really makes the player feel as though it wasn't intended for them to use in the first place, although it would lead to a lot of fights being over with a lot faster. Having tried to play through the game without killing anyone, I found combat to be much harder than that, as combinations of normal attacks became more and more useless, and only takedowns would end up saving me from the two punches an opponent had to deliver to take me down. The somewhat agitating combat is only made worse when the game decides it will change the rules of how certain moves work as you play. And this was no more noticeable than with the jumping takedowns, whereas most of the other attacks will at least trigger constantly. You could attack someone while jumping through the air, and if high enough, or fast enough, or some mechanic I apparently could not figure out, it would cause an instant takedown, making it the quickest and safest way to knock an enemy out. But the problem arrives when you can go about this two separate times in the exact same manner, and one out of the two times it wouldn't work. This is minor detail for the most part, because more than two-thirds of the game is non-combat oriented, or simply running from combat altogether, 
in the pond defeat the checkpoints are generally all over the place so you never end up having to replay too much at once especially in the particular moments where things get more complicated the musical score is nice with a very mellow relaxing sound to it that only tends to pick up when action is about to be or currently is present it helps to make the overall experience better as you don't feel nearly as stressed as you could trying to navigate around to get to your objective and sometimes failing the requisite one plus times in the process of doing so. With the relaxing tunes as you would if it was just adrenaline rich dubstep or something so it's not as much of a hectic attempt at things. You feel more at home even if you do fail and have to redo a part. The voice work is done well with the actors putting an adequate amount of motion to their lines and reading them understandably too, to boot. Although, you best get used to hearing the word blues, as nearly every time a cop is around, that's what gets said. I'm also still not entirely sure why the police are always trying to shoot every single parkour messenger they come across on sight, but I probably missed something while enjoying the rooftop obstacle course lying around. The guns don't really sound good in comparison to all the other audio, but considering how the guns are really even there, to just give you an option in combat, I can only imagine why nobody really cared about making the gun sound that great when the main draw was free running. Graphically, it destroyed my computer until I turned physics off. Apparently, breaking windows causes so much lag in game that it became unplayable. Uh, at first I thought this was pretty surprising because my computer that I'm playing on isn't all that bad, but considering how many pieces of glass were breaking into individual chunks and then falling all over the place on all the different sides of my characters, I'm surprised it didn't flat out crash the game. After that was dealt with and I turned that option off, everything ran much smoother, high graphics, anti-aliasing, most of the normal preset options you would imagine, although no window mode was present, which gave me kind of a little bit of hiccup when I was trying to record this video and everything I tried to use just reported back a black screen. The game also comes with a race mode which lets you try to complete a race from checkpoint to easily noticeable checkpoint which it's actually easier to figure out where to go in this than it is in story mode for the top time as well as an extras menu that has some artwork and audio and any of the videos unlocked from playing story mode. By the end of the story, I was getting pretty frustrated with controls, and more specifically the combat, but the enjoyability of the free running combat free courtesy of race mode really helped me level back and bring me to normal as far as stress and aggravation went. It's a good game that isn't too long, it took maybe between 6 to 8 hours I believe to burn through the story, and even with my large amount of distress caused, it never really became so much as punishing as it was just difficult at some moments. And most of that was brought about with how I was playing the game in a very non-killing manner. Although, outside of the race mode, the replayability is probably going to be pretty low. Because there are collectibles to unlock the extras. But there's maybe three a stage, so it's never really that much. Surely, for those who want to experience parkour without the risk of falling off a rooftop and breaking a leg, this is probably at least worth a rental. <laughs>